Hello everyone and welcome to part two of my Belle Inspired Dress using the Simplicity 1300. Now if you have not already seen part one where I start assembling the dress as well as all the information, I will have that link down below for you. But for now we're going to pick up where we left off which was adding the sleeves to the rest of the dress. So we're going to finish up the dress. We will make the bows and then we will also assemble the skirt in this video and then you will see the final look at the very end. So stick around for that. But let's pick up where we left off and here we go. Going to my dress piece now, I'm gonna turn it inside out. And going to the sleeves, you're gonna notice that you have the notches that you cut at the bottom of the sleeve hole. And you're gonna match these notches to the corresponding sleeve. Once you have your matching sleeve, you're gonna tuck the sleeve inside of the dress with right sides together. And the first thing I'm going to start matching up is the underarm seams. And then I'll match up the notches and then I'll move up to the dots on both sides. And then I will go and match the top dot on the sleeve to your shoulder seam. Once those are pinned up, we're going to start to gather and we're going to pull up the extra fabric on the sleeve to match with the armhole of the dress. Of course, you're going to move around your gather so they are evenly distributed and then pin everything in place. So both of these on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Going to the sleeve heading, I'm going to fold this in half lengthwise, wrong sides together. And then I will iron this down. I'm going to pin up the open edge and I'm going to do a gathering base stitch along these curves. Match the center dot to the shoulder seam once again. And then the two smaller dots on the outside ends of your sleeve heading, you're going to pull up the gathers so that they match the small dots on your sleeve holes. Distribute the gathers, then pin it in place. So you can see it should just be on the top of your sleeve like so. And then sew these on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So our dress is pretty much assembled at this point. Moving on to the bows, I'm going to fold the bow piece lengthwise matching the raw edges right sides together. Pin this up in place. Sew this together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Going to the bow end, I will also fold this lengthwise right sides together and pin this raw edge in place. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure to leave about a 1 to 2 inch gap in the middle. Taking my knot piece, I will fold this in half lengthwise matching the notches right sides together. And I will sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Going to my bow, I will turn this right side out. I will make sure the seam is centered. And once I like the position, I will iron this in place. This will be the back. Finish off the edges however you like. Taking the bow end, I will turn this right sides out. Make sure to poke out those points and then press it all in place. With the extra fabric at the opening, you're going to turn it under at the same seam allowance and you want to make sure it, that the edges line up and then you can press this down as well. Go ahead and slip stitch this closed. For the knot, we're going to turn this right sides out. And this is a lot smaller, so using a pencil or a chopstick will definitely help you turn this smaller piece. Just like the bow, you're going to position the seam in the middle and press this in place. Then finish off the edges how you like. With the bow piece, at the back of the bow, I'm going to overlap the ends about a fourth of an inch. And I'm just going to sew them together down the middle. 
So we're gonna start assembling our bow now. So I'm gonna bunch up the center of my bow piece and you can do this however you want to, but I'm just pinching it in a little zigzag motion. Then I'm going to add my bow end. And at this point, it doesn't matter which direction you're placing it. And I'm gonna bunch this up as well with the center. And then you're gonna take your knot and you're gonna wrap that around the middle. And with that open edge, I'm gonna fold it underneath and pin this in place. Go ahead and adjust your bow till you like it. and I will slip stitch that opening closed. So we're gonna make four of these. So here's my four. And then going to our dress, you're gonna place one at the waist, another one slightly above that one, and then one on the outside seam of the sleeve flounce on each sleeve. and sew these on. All right, so the next undertaking is the skirt. So we have a ton of pieces, so hopefully this won't get confusing. I will try my best to organize this out for you, but here we go. So this is the skirt first under tier. Number 27, I'm gonna take my pieces and lay them right sides together, matching the edges. And I'm gonna sew these edges at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seams. So this is basically what we're gonna do for each section of strips that are cut out. This is what each one's gonna look like, and obviously some will have a lot more pieces to connect, but essentially you're making giant circles. So these are all my under tiers. So your number 28 section pieces have two, your number 29 pieces have five, and that is it for your under tier. And then going to your upper ruffles, number 30 has two. Number 31 has three. Number 29 has five. Number 32 has nine, and that is for your skirt upper ruffles. Now for the chart in the pattern, it's gonna show you which section of upper ruffles and how many 33 under ruffle pieces you're gonna have with that section. So I'll have it laid out right here for you to make it a little less confusing. So all of your tool pieces will also be assembled into large circles as well. You just don't have to iron open the seams. You can leave them as they are. So you're just laying each end right sides together and sewing your 5 8 inch seams to create a giant circle that matches with the corresponding skirt section from the chart. So if you wanna put these together in groups and organize them how you want so we're not getting confused, that would be best. So the number 30 section will have two 33 pieces. The 31 section will have three 33 pieces. The 29 section will have four 33 pieces, and the 32nd section will have seven pieces of the tool. Before we begin assembling everything, we're going to go to the upper skirt ruffle sections, and you want to hem up the bottom edge on all your sections, and then you also want to do a gathering base stitch around the top of each section, and you also want to do a gathering base stitch across the top of your tool. And I just start and stop on every strip before and after each seam. That way, since some of these pieces are extremely big, it will help us gather them up in the sections needed later on. For the bottom skirt edge of your fourth upper ruffle, number 32, you are going to hem up the bottom edge, but you will also add your lace trim all the way around so essentially you wanna do this the same way that you did your lower sleeve flounce. And how we added the lace trim there, we are now adding it to the bottom last ruffle only. Okay, so taking the number 32 section, I'm going to make one seam my main seam the whole time. And I'm gonna fold this whole strip in half to find the opposite end. And I'm gonna mark this with a pin. Then from here, I'm gonna take my two marked seams and I'm gonna lay them together. And now with my seven piece tool section, I'm gonna match one of those seams with my main seam. 
And then I will also fold this in half and match the opposite end with the pin that we marked on the opposite side of the ruffle. Now I'm gonna meet these two middle pins and I'm gonna fold the strip in half to find the middle point between the left side section And then I will meet the center pins again to find the left side section of the tool and I'm gonna match these together. Once again, back to the middle seams. And then I'll find the middle of the ruffle on the right side. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the tool. So what I just did is I created four sections in the ruffle and four sections in the tool and they should all be even now because we want this all to match up. Now the biggest task here is making sure that the tool lines up with our ruffle now. So it's easier to do in sections like this. You really do not need to gather up the tool very much. If you do your gathering base stitch, it actually slightly ruffles it. You might even have to take some of it out, but it is the perfect amount to line up with the edge. So you're basically gonna line up the top edges of the tool and the ruffle and pin everything in place all the way around. And we're going to base stitch these on right between the original gathering base stitches. You will still be able to gather your ruffles correctly this way. So now I'm moving on to the upper ruffle number 29 and this one has five pieces. So I am once again going to make my four sections And then I will do the same thing with the tool section, which should be four of them. So each seam on the tool should match up with each pin that you place in this ruffle section. Then for the second upper ruffle, number 31 has three pieces and the tool under ruffles have three pieces. So each seam should line up for this one. So that makes it really easy. And then the first upper ruffle, number 30, should have two pieces. And then the 33 tool pieces will have two as well. So that's an easy lineup once again. So you should have to gather up the 30 and 31 sections of tool to match up with the top edge of the fabric upper ruffles so that those raw edges line up. So with these three sections, I'm gonna sew on the tool base stitched between the gathering base stitches on all three of these. So going back to my number 32 section, the fourth ruffle section. So a side note for my tool on this section, I actually cut it off because my trim was smaller. So I assumed the tool was going to match up with the bottom edge of the lace. But actually what I never noticed in the pattern was that they have the contrasting layers of tool sticking out between each layer. So the tool is actually supposed to extend past the bottom edge of this ruffle. So you can see I cut mine off, which I'm fine with in the end. It was not a big deal. I left the rest of the tool length the way they were, but I just wanna let you know in case yours looks different and you have a lot of overhang of the tool on this first layer, it's supposed to be like that. It's just really hard to tell in that pattern picture. So that was really interesting because I didn't notice until I actually started assembling the next section and realized they all had tool overhang. I am going to grab my third under tier section, number 29, and this one will have the five sections. So I'm going to pick a seam to be my main seam to match up with the main seam on my ruffle. And we're going to match the bottom edge of the under tier with the top edge of the ruffle. So starting with that main seam, I'm gonna pin that up first. So from here, I'm gonna find my four sections of my under tier and match that up with my four section pins on my ruffle. I'm so sorry if this was really hard to see. You'll see it a little better in the next sections since they're smaller. I didn't wanna leave anything out so once you see it later, hopefully this will make a lot more sense if you come back to rewatch this part. So with each section, you're gonna gather up the ruffle to match the top edge of your under tier. Once it's gathered up to the correct size, distribute your gathers and then pin it all in place. 
So this is what I have on my first section. And then you wanna do the same thing to the three other sections. Now that I have it all pinned up, you're gonna sew this together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now open the under tier and the ruffle. Next, I'm going to grab my third upper ruffle, number 29, and we're gonna match the top end of our ruffle with the top edge of our under tier. So once again, if you haven't already, mark the four sections of your ruffle and match that up with the four sections of the under tier. Once you have your sections sectioned off, this should match up perfectly around the whole top edge. So no gathering yet. And we're gonna base stitch this on between the original gathering base stitches. So now we have this sort of layered look going on. Then we're gonna grab our second under tier, number 28. So we have two sections on this one. We want this to be right sides together. So we're gonna match up our main seam first with one of the seams on the second under tier. And then of course that second seam is gonna match up at the opposite end pin. All right, so this seems really small. It is a big task, but we're gonna gather up the top edge. We want it to match up with the bottom edge of our under tier. So I basically gather this completely up all the way almost. Distribute the gathers once you have the right size. Pin this together. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So now we have this sort of cupcake thing kind of shaping. Grab your second upper ruffle and we want to match up the top edges on your ruffle with the top edge of the under tier. Gather up the ruffle to match the top edge of the under tier. So we got a little bit of gathering going on now on this one. Distribute your gathers, pin it in place. Base stitch it on between the original gathering base stitches. Then going to the skirt first under tier with right sides together, match your main seam with one of the seams, then the opposite seams together. And here we go, we're gonna gather up the top edge of the ruffle once again to match this small section on each side. So this is pretty gathered up as well in this section. Distribute your gathers, pin together. Sew it on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now the last upper ruffle, number 30. Once again, we only have two seams, so we're gonna match up the two seams on each side. We want the top raw edge of the ruffle to match the top raw edge of the under tier. Gather it up, distribute your gathers, pin it in place, 5 8 inch seam allowance. So this is the skirt. It is a monster. The last part of this skirt is the skirt casing. So we're gonna lay our skirt casing pieces right sides together, pinning up the sides. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And only on one side, you're gonna leave a gap between the dots that you've marked. So that should be open. Iron open the seams. Fold your skirt casing wrong sides together, matching up the raw edges, and pin this in place all the way around. Base stitch this together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now for the casing, we're gonna lay it right sides together, making sure that opening 
is on the outside since that's considered the wrong side. Match your main seam and then the seam on the opposite end. So this should match perfectly with the top edge of the skirt now. Pin these raw edges together. Sew this together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So going to the inside of my skirt, you do not have to, but I would recommend finishing off all the edges to keep from any scratching and to help keep everything clean inside. Taking my elastic, I'm going to measure my waist and cut the elastic to the length of my waist plus one inch. Now this is up to you. You can make it as tight or as loose as you want it to be on you. So go ahead and put it around your own waist and see how you like the fit. Take your safety pins and apply one to each end. Going to the opening on the skirt casing, we're gonna thread the elastic through the casing using the safety pin to help push it through all the way around. Make sure your elastic doesn't get lost inside. Once you have both ends out, overlap them about an inch and then we want to sew back and forth about three or four times in two areas to make sure that it's secure. Once that's done, you can go ahead and tuck this inside of the skirt casing and you want to slip stitch this opening closed. Wow, you guys, was that skirt a mission or was it a mission? <laughs> But it is done. Your whole dress is now complete. Your skirt is now complete. And I cannot tell you how much I almost didn't want to take this off. It fit me so great. Such a great costume. Such a great dress. Such a great pattern. Of course, once you figure out how to use the pattern. Confusing is an understatement. But like I said, now that I have the knowledge of pattern assembling with commercial patterns, it definitely helped me figure out how to put this all together because I have been lost on how to do this. So I will call this one a success, but I'm in love. The skirt has a few personal things that I would personally change in the future if I ever make this skirt again, but a lot of it's hidden under the peplum anyways, so it didn't really matter too much for the small changes that I wanna make. But essentially, I'm really happy how it came out. I wasn't sure on the fabric choices until now that I see it all put together and it really did contrast well. The great part is I actually really do feel like Belle in this dress. I would just need to add a few more accessories to make it pop a little more, but otherwise I really hope this wasn't as confusing as I think it is. Hopefully you can compare the pattern directions with the video and everything just snaps together perfectly in your head. Like I said, part one is linked down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. So I know you wanna see more patterns or costumes like this, but I'll have more great videos coming out soon. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notified when those videos get uploaded. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.